You want to give it a go? All good. Great. It's all yours, John. Awesome. On the spot. There's a lot of pressure. Um, and I guess this space here um, is probably my own personal perspective. Um, Carl, I think feel free to jump in as well as Daniel, anyone else. Um, I'll go through, I guess, a series of slides of um, what I think is really important in terms of CV and branding and really keen to hear your thoughts as well. Um, and then we'll get into sort of a round table discussion. Um, so this is the third week of the 30 day challenge. And um, I guess the focus of this was um, around sort of improving job opportunities for certain individuals. Um, it's good to see a few members in the community have already um, found um, a job as well. Um, Javed, I'm going to highlight you. Um, fantastic achievement. Um, Thank you. And you've sort of um, sort of just entered the Australian market as well and managed to pick up something in probably the most challenging time over the last decade. Nice work, buddy. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, happy to be here again. Um, I'm really honored to be here with you guys. Yeah, as Sean said, uh, yeah, I was fortunate to land the job. Uh, and um, yeah, uh, just in the middle of uh, you know, the uh, pandemic and the time that everybody thinks that it's maybe impossible to get a position. But yeah, I just got it. Congratulations. Thank you. And as a data scientist, um, you're very accomplished as well. Um, so it's no wonder why um, they snapped you up quite quickly. And um, I think there's there's a lot of opportunities here in Australia. So I think, yeah, um, hopefully this career goes well for you. And um, I think also working um, with a few recruiters on a few different roles, um, I am starting to see the market um, open up. Um, there's probably assurance there for a lot of different industries, um, banking and finance in particular. Um, so within education, it's always quite difficult to um, attract the right candidates um, in this space um, because there is a lot of demand, especially within financial services. Um, what are your thoughts on that, Carl? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think a lot of the banking and finance clients we work with, they, they've picked up recruitment, if anything, they, they brought kind of forward their digitalization projects and their data projects and yeah a lot of that technology recruitment has actually probably come forward a couple of years if anything and it's yeah it's been interesting to see that the market the last few weeks or maybe even a month or so now has, has picked up massively um candidates i was speaking to them and and they were taking month two months to to secure roles now now they're on the market for a week and they're, they're almost securing roles so it's, it's looking really positive and i hoping it's going to continue into next year, especially with the news of the um, vaccines that are coming in. Um, even a lot of our other clients who may be uh, downsized, Qantas is a good example. Um, they, they got rid of quite a few people right at the start. Um, they're, they're starting to ramp up recruitment a bit again in certain areas, not necessarily the airlines as much yet, but in their Qantas loyalty side of things, um, starting to pick up a bit. So yeah, positive news all around, I think. That's great to hear. And I think even Qantas, although I think the, they recently acquired um, a large logistics business as well. So they're looking at how they diversify and um, you sort of need backend support to be able to manage that transition, I think. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's it. A lot of businesses, Qantas as well, are, are finding other ways to, to kind of bring in that revenue when maybe their main bulk of business isn't necessarily going as well during COVID. So, yeah, people are getting kind of to that stage now where they're able to start hiring again. So really, really good. Definitely. Um, so I might start the presentation. So I guess this area this week sort of talks about uh, your own CV and marketing yourself. Um, I think it's probably a topic that everyone has an opinion and um, there's no sort of wrong answer. Um, but I think there are probably some tips and tricks that sort of enable you to get ahead of other candidates. Um, so I'll cover those. So the first one, I guess, is just a brief summary and I'll go into some detail. The first area is, I guess, keep your CV fairly brief. Um, I have seen candidates where you know we're looking at eight to ten pages of information and some really good content. Um, part of this is trying to balance 
um, your CV with just enough content that provides a really good summary so that when you actually get into the interview, um, you can sort of really showcase your skills and capabilities and um, look at customizing the CV for the particular job that you're going for. Um, so I guess with data and analytics, um, you've got data engineers, you've got data analysts, data scientists. There's a lot of crossover with the different types of roles that you would want to apply for. And um, I see sort of data professionals sort of cycling through quite a few different specializations and some sort of sticking to the same profession as well. Um, so if you want to improve your odds and um, you don't necessarily mind um, going across specializations, then customizing the CV for the job is a really good idea. Um, and so if I was making a comparison, you've got a data engineer and you've got different data integration tools, um, looking at data architecture, uh, like Data Vault, um, Kimball or Star Schema, um, looking at how you transition data for, from one layer to another layer is really important. Um, and then for a data scientist, it might be something completely different. So you might be looking at data wrangling, um, statistical methods, um, looking at different algorithms and projects that you've applied that to. Um, so it's about sort of customizing it if you want to go across specializations or um, really keeping it fairly straightforward and summarized to the particular area that you would want to apply for. Um, these days, I think candidates that get ahead include a cover letter. A cover letter can be just one page. Um, it's always good to um, sort of have a sort of templated cover letter in which you can interchangeably look at the company or the industry that you're applying for. Um, it's always nice to reference the company na name in the cover letter. I think that is mostly forgotten. It's just way too generic, but sort of tailoring it to the industry or company that you're applying for sort of gets you noticed. Um, and um, there are a few candidates and something not to do is go on seek.com and reference like a cover letter download and just uploading it without changing it. Um, it's sort of a dead giveaway. Um, I've seen a few candidates where they've had almost the same cover letter and they've just changed a couple of words and that sort of can actually make you go backwards, I think. Um, there are some templates out there. So it's sort of choose your own adventure when it comes to um, CVs, resumes. Um, I think looking at a standardized template allows the reader to process that information quite efficiently. Um, Visual CV, um, CVMQR or Maker um, provide some really good stock standard CVs that you could almost replicate and just change it to your own liking. Um, then also including some contact information. Um, these are just some really top tips. Um, did anyone else want to share anything else at all? Um, yeah, I think everything you say there is yeah, super important. And, and I guess using that template will help how you, you kind of do the layout. Um, and I think everybody, and this is what the main question I always get asked on how to set up your CV is, is, is kind of what do you put where? Um, I think the majority of people that I work with tend to like to see their, their kind of technical skills in kind of bullet points at the top and then go into experience after. Um, but it's very much down to each individual's preference when it comes to line managers that we work with. Um, but yeah, my, my recommendation would be always to um, yeah, put that kind of technical experience at the top so people can kind of delve into that quickly and then go into the, the experience and where that experience comes from underneath. But um, yeah, no, I think everything else you said, so uh, yeah, very, very good advice. Yeah, I think it all makes sense. Um, and um, I, I wanna second that. So um, CV is kind of like the first form of communication to, um, you know, between a candidate and um, an employer. And um, so making it brief is so important that um, just because like people are much more patient when talking to someone face to face and they can sort of like wait for, I, I don't know, a few minutes to, to see if they get the point. Whereas if they read the CV, they'll be just like, okay, if after one minute, I'm still not sure about this uh, candidate, then I'll probably go for another um, CV. So uh, definitely it's very important to keep it brief and also relevant. Um, and especially in the data realm. Um, so 
data is always like, whether you're talking about data analyst or data engineering or data scientist, you're talking about technical side and also industry knowledge. So if you sort of like make it very clear that, okay, I have data knowledge and I have tech um, you know, experience, but I also have um, you know, industry knowledge. And for example, if I'm applying for some FinTech and I'm saying that, I had very um, relevant experience in the financial industry, then it's actually um, like a very good plus. And um, with the visual CV and that sort of thing, it's very good um, for like effectively visually communicating um, to um, whoever is reading the CV um, that, okay, this is what I've got. and and it, you know, hopefully it keeps you, you know, interested in, in going forward, like re reading forward. So yeah, I just want to second that and it's really good. That's a good point. And um, I think you mentioned also keeping it relevant too. Um, one of the other sort of lessons that I've learned is or sort of a good watch point actually to sort of filter through candidates is attention to detail. Um, so the candidates actually made the summary really relevant and they've looked at a lot of the keywords that you would want to look for in hiring that candidate, but then looking at the um, career history and some of the more detail in what they've done, it's a mismatch. So they might have been sort of working on an Oracle infrastructure, but they talk a lot about cloud infrastructure and usage in that summary. So there's a mismatch there. So for me, it sounds like they've just tried to update their summary to get into the role, but it's not quite evident that they have the skills and experience. Yeah, exactly. I agree. Um, so attention to detail, if you're summarizing it, it should allow you to focus more on that detail than sort of creating this CV that's 10 pages, um, but it can really detract if you sort of miss some of those basic elements as well. So the next slide talks about the CV templates. So Visual CV, I've only just found actually, I was doing some research when putting this um, presentation together. I thought it was really interesting. Um, what it has is a number of different templates. And this is just a screenshot of the top four. Um, there, there's a lot of variety in some of these templates. Um, there's no wrong answer to this. But I think if you're able to display that information clearly and you know it's got maybe some a little bit of color not too much um, but structured in a way that allows for someone to easily read it then it's you know you have a good chance of getting over line towards an interview um, some of the basic components um, a summary is really quite helpful um, looking at work experience and history and maybe a little bit of detail um, I don't think it's necessary to include like a full work history. Um, so if you're including a role that you did 15 years ago, um, it may not be that relevant now. Um, maybe you just choose um, sort of history spanning the last five or maybe even 10 years, depending on the detail. Um, looking at education um, and then sort of combining that with some of the technical capabilities and also softer skills. Um, will sort of give you an edge, I think. Um, and then you can get really creative with this um, in looking at um, your level of mastery of skill. Um, that's the third example. Um, including some pictures on your portfolio. So if you've got Kaggle projects or GitHub projects, now's the time to sort of display that. Um, a hiring manager would tend to look at a lot of those things. Um, they will type your name into Google and see what they can find. Um, and if you can make sort of those artifacts, Kaggle, GitHub come to the top, that's really attractive. Um, Sean, we just got a question. If you don't mind, I may actually ask the question as we go. Um, so um, Jasna is asking, what's your opinion on interactive Tableau public resumes? Yeah, I think it's it's starting to become a little bit more fashionable, although quite rare. I don't often see it, but when I see it, I, I sort of see, like I would want to have a look at it and maybe even interact with it. Um, I think with your web developers, um, there tends to be more sort of online interactive 
um, web-based CVs um, because it also helps to showcase their capabilities and also their work. Um, with software developers, um, I think there probably is an application as well. Um, what makes it quite challenging is with standard um, HRIS or like where you sort of submit your CV, they don't necessarily allow for that functionality. They're asking for a PDF or a Word document. Um, so I think look at the company that you're applying for and sort of work out what might be appropriate for submit submission. Um, if you found a role and you know who the hiring manager is, then reach out on LinkedIn and maybe send them your virtual CV and just ask them, does my skills and experience line up for this particular role? Here's my CV. They're, I think they're likely to click on that link and maybe just explore that detail. Um, but general experience, if you don't know the hiring manager, then I think a PDF, a Word document, just to get it through their HR system um, will help standardize their review process. Thanks, John. I've got a question um, around a visual CV and um, just um, keen to hear the, our panelist view as well, Danielle and Carl, that um, how about um, video CVs? Have you had any experience that someone sent you a short one minute video um, intro? And sometimes um, just to put it into context, for example, for myself, my name is not necessarily a common name in Australian culture. And so many people don't know I'm a girl or a boy. And um, sometimes, it shouldn't be, but sometimes that can be, um, you know, a point of uh, maybe a decision for them that, you know, which way they want to go, although we all want to go for equality. Um, so I'm, my question is that what about that, that type of visual that you send a one minute um, intro to a, either a recruiter or a hire manager and just introduce yourself and then you send your PDF or a Word document um, much more sort of a detailed resume later. Yeah, I've had varied experience and feedback from this. Um, one of our clients, they actually have it as part of their recruitment process um, at Foxtel. And the feedback actually from the candidates is, is probably more, more negative um, necessarily than the clients. I think from a client's point of view, it, it can be good. Um, I don't think necessarily you can get all the information, but then as you say, that's where the PDF and Word document comes from next. Um, but when... Foxtel incorporate that into their, their process it became a bit of a hassle I think people didn't feel too comfortable with it um, and it actually slowed down the process a little bit and we, we advised them that it might be best to take that out which which he ended up doing um, but yeah I when I receive those types of videos and I have a couple over the years um, I, I've engaged with it and I've, I've, I've liked it and I've ended up reading the probably more interested in reading the CV um, and so it has actually worked I'd say um, but it's, I, I don't think it's completely there yet. I think for graduate roles and roles without necessarily the right kind of, where you, where you need some kind of super technical experience, um, sometimes that can be better because it's more about that kind of personality, which is really important. Um, so that they can be good in those senses, but um, for the more technical roles, I think it's, it's still just as important, if not more important to, to send your PDF or your Word document across. Okay, so um, thanks, Carl, and thanks, Sean, um, for, for answering this. So um, my, uh, some of the things might already be co been covered uh, by Sean. So I would say that um, all these new types of um, like unconventional sort of way of communicating your, your ability, um, I would categorize them into um, two types. One is um, proof of your ability. So um, Tableau falls into um, this category. And also there are some people writing like um, a React, uh, you know, front end, uh, you know, page or whatever um, for this type of role. And I'm totally for that. Um, and it's kind of like a proof of your ability uh, on the role that you're applying for. And of course it needs to be relevant. So if you are, um, applying for, I, I don't know, like a data engineer, and then you are doing React, then it, it's not very relevant to prove your um, ability in the data engineering area. Um, so that's the first one. Uh, so obviously pros and cons. Pros is that it proves that you have the ability because it's tangible. 
um, and you can open source that as well. Now, um, some of the challenges would be um, the sharing of the information. So um, some of the, some of the candidates would like to have, um, you know, um, only certain people from accessing it and, and not like the whole world. But then if you do that type of thing, normally you host it somewhere and then you need to do security around it and, and, and things like that. So that's a, an extra you know, level of work that you need to do if you want to achieve sort of like uh, information security. Um, and also some cons like, like, you know, the channel is limited because you can't um, apply on online, for example, for some, um, you know, platform. And also um, the other thing that I want to point out is that it can be a distraction from um, who is infer like the recipient um, side of the information. So they may focus more on the work itself instead of um, like uh, who I'm, you know, sort of looking at and the candidates itself. It Sometimes it can be a di distraction depending on how you structure your um, CV um, in these, um, you know, different tech stacks. And the second one, um, I'll very quickly uh, cover that. So video, I would categorize them as like the second type where, um, if I assume that they're applying for data job, for example, then I would say video is not the proof of your um, ability to do data work. It's more like um, either, uh, you know, um, like a better way of communicating or um, it's kind of like a surprise, a little surprise for, for the employer. And to me, that reminds me of the history of, um, you know, cover letter. So cover letter came out when people were still mailing out, you know, those CVs to the employers. And obviously when you mail out the CV to employers, if you don't have a context, then they don't know what to do with the CV. So you have to have a, you know, cover letter and say, I'm applying for this and this is why I, I think I'm suitable for this. And then after that, you put that cover letter together with your CV and, you know, mail it physically to um, the employer. So I think this is kind of like a new type of cover letter. Um, and it's kind of like giving you the context um, alongside the CV itself. And whether it's, um, you know, um, like effective or not, I think Cara has more experience on that. And, and I guess Cara has already covered that. So I, I don't have anything to add on this. But yeah, hopefully that answers the question. They're, they're really good points, I think. And um, I think if you have the capability and time, more so time, um, you might be able to differentiate yourself um, if you have some sort of visual CV. Um, and it might be good to sort of advertise that on LinkedIn, depending on the sensitivity. And it might be a good way to get you noticed. But generally, it's not required. Um, I think that's a really good point that you mentioned. And I guess what's in the CV in in sort of a rough order that I typically see is sort of going from top to bottom. Um, the contact information doesn't necessarily need to include your address, but at least the phone number is helpful, um, an email address. Um, make sure the email address is, um, you know, not too outlandish, um, that you might have carried across your email address when you're in high school, um, that may not be appropriate. Um, look at making it fairly professional. Um, a summary I think is fairly straightforward. Um, your history and work experience. That might also touch on joint projects that you've worked with other individuals on as well. Um, doesn't necessarily need to be sort of paid work, um, especially when you're trying to enter the field. Um, and then technical and soft skills. Um, I think a lot of individuals focus on the technical skills. Um, I, I know my, I think my current CV, it has um, AWS, GCP, and sort of the very different flavors of that. Um, but now I've started to add, add and highlight the softer skills. I've recognized in, in program management that the success of a data warehouse is also dependent on change management and really good communication as well. Um, so make sure you don't leave those things out. Um, and if you wanted to brush up on those skills, look at some certification as well, if you're thinking more long-term. So for change management, it might be something like ProSci certification. Um, and that can really start to 
complement your technical skill set and ensure the project that you're delivering is has a higher chance of succeeding. So LinkedIn, um, here is my LinkedIn um, as an example. Um, in terms of getting noticed, um, I think look at how you use LinkedIn. Um, it can be a really great way for recruiters to sort of do a search. And if you can sort of look at keywords, summary and history, you might be able to get on that first page for them, for the role that they're searching for. Um, if you do, um, that I think is fantastic because if you can flag yourself as either passive or active in the market, um, then you're going to have recruiters talk to you and look at offering potential jobs um, that they could place you in. And for me personally, um, LinkedIn is how I got all of my jobs. Um, I didn't necessarily apply directly. I had recruiters talk to me. I think Kyle, you probably use LinkedIn quite a lot. Um, and I know Brendan is another one, but it's a fantastic tool. What do you think? Yeah, look, I'd, I'd say nowadays, I think LinkedIn is, is probably the tool that I use most. Obviously we'll still post adverts and we have our own network and our own database, but um, but if, we, if we're going out to, to headhunt for a new role, um, yeah, LinkedIn is where we get all that information, which, which companies um, are, are maybe competitors to the company we're recruiting for, where we can kind of get those kind of best, more, more relevant candidates from. So it's really, really important, just like Sean's profile here, that you get all the information you can on there about your background, your experience. There's even a skills tab at the bottom. Um, there's even, if you are looking for work, there's even a tab you can click that says you are open to work. And in the recruitment back end, we can see that, we can see that you're open. Um, but don't worry if you're trying to keep your job search quiet because um, LinkedIn have put something in place where anyone within your immediate business will not be able to see that you're open to work. So um, you can still tick that and you it's not going to come back and bite you. Um, yeah, no, LinkedIn is is probably the place where we, we tend to get over 50% of our candidates from now. So really, really important. You have everything up to date like Sean does here. And even interacting on posts, you can see jobs, you can find out who line managers are. I know Sean mentioned earlier, if you do have that um, visual CV, you can send the link via, link, uh, via LinkedIn messages. I think that's a really good way to do it. And it's, it's good to get yourself recognized that way as well. And it's, it's just yet yeah, a way we can now um, be more connected to, to those roles and the people recruiting them. That's a good summary. Um, Sean, we've got a question um, about the references when you were just covering the sort of the outline of a resume. Um, where do you put the references and do you actually provide the references detail or um, what I usually do is put, you know, um, references available upon request and just kind of leave it like that. But would you um, suggest that someone put the name of the references and the detail, um, skip it all together? That's one question. And the other one is about LinkedIn and um, with the new hashtag open to work or the new hashtag hiring. Um, and probably it's uh, maybe more of a question for Carl. Um, do, do you uh, you know recommend that people actually use those hashtags, or um, do you think that um, better kind of keep it in the background, just using the open to work um, sort of option of LinkedIn and not sort of a broadcasting too much? Yeah, um, I think it's it's worth doing both. Um, so if you are actively looking, you're open to work, it doesn't, you, you either left your company or you are leaving and it doesn't matter that it's broadcasted across LinkedIn. I think it's, it's super important because that's the where everyone else outside of the recruitment network can see that profile that is open to opportunities. So you might get um, an ex-colleague who's, who's open to work, who then you can refer to a friend or another colleague or even have an opportunity in your own team. And I think it's super important to do both. Um, yeah, if you don't want it to be broadcasted across LinkedIn, that's when, yeah, you can tick the back end one and, and that's when the recruiters can see you. I think, yeah, no, it's, it's super important to have the, the hashtag open to, open to work um, if, if you are actively looking. That's a good point. And, um... The only other addition there would be um, like the headline just under your name. You can customize that to whatever you want. Um, I managed to find a couple of candidates because they also added looking for work within the headline. And um, for me, that made it searchable. So if I'm searching for first degree contacts, um, it, also, it picks up the headline. Um, and then I can also see the icon as well. Um, the icon is, I don't, for me, unless I, I'm not a recruiter, it's not easily searchable. 
Um, but if you can do all three and the company knows that you're leaving or you're looking for work, that really increases your odds of finding something, I think. Um, John, can I also please have your uh, view on the references as well? Thanks. Yeah, sure. So um, I think you need to protect your references. That's my personal view. Um, so unless I know that I've been successful, um, uh, that I would actually provide the names or details of the referees. Um, so definitely, um, I probably don't even include it um, as part of the CV. Um, but I think it's a general knowledge that you would need to provide references for any job that you would apply for. Um, as part of any recruitment process that I've been in, it's been made quite clear. Um, but I'll be quite protective of giving their names and details. Um, and yeah. In addition to that, uh, sorry, yeah, Howard, so do you want to? No, you go, Daniel, sorry. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, just in addition to um, what Sean said about uh, the reference, um, reference, like the same reference might be um, more relevant to some employer than the others. So um, uh, I would say that I wouldn't really give um, a specific reference on CV. And um, the reason is that let's think about um, hypothetical um, sort of case where um, in a data world, um, there are some essential skills like, you know, SQL and then Spark and then uh, data warehouse. And then let's say you have um, some SQL experience in a stock trading company. And then you have um, a spark in a logistic company. And now you have, um, you know, a, a data warehouse in a, like you're doing data warehouse in a stock trading company. Now, if you're applying for um, a FinTech company, I would say that, you know, the, the first and third one is the best reference because it's more relevant to uh, what the new role is doing. Um, whereas if you go for, let's say, you know, um, a consulting company, then they have more emphasis on your technical skill. And then I would choose number two and three because, um, you know, it's just assumed that everyone can do, um, you know, quite a bit, you know, level of SQL. So it really depends on what you're applying for. And, um, you know, um, then you can say, okay, these are the most relevant uh, references to give. Um, so yeah, that's the addition to what Sean said. Yeah, that's really good. And um, I guess moving on to LinkedIn as well, um, your brand I think is really important. Um, if, if Carl, 50% of your time's on LinkedIn, then you probably would wanna look out for LinkedIn profiles that at least have a photo, um, maybe, depending on what their headline is. Um, also, I think it's good to look at um, your potential reach on LinkedIn. Um, so if you are creating articles or resharing content, um, try to include something insightful. Um, and then over time, you'll start to get others sort of contributing and liking your content, uh, maybe even resharing it. Um, and LinkedIn has a really good feature where you can start to feature some of those top posts as well. Um, so the example, I've sort of featured posts that I think are interesting for my own career um, that have gained a little bit of attention and um, you'll get noticed, I think, by recruiters, hopefully in the right way. Um, just make sure that it's on topic. No, I absolutely completely agree with you on that. I think um, it's, it's quite evident when, when people are obviously passionate about what they do, when, when they're kind of featured and, and they are writing these articles or sharing these articles. And as you can see, you're getting what, 800 odd likes on, on some of your articles there, which, which is great. And it spreads so far as well. And you do get noticed by other people, not just recruiters. It could be hiring managers in the future. Um, so I think it is really important if you are passionate about something is to, to get out there, share articles, get involved commenting on articles as well. You can also get noticed by doing that. Um, but yeah, no, I completely agree with what you're saying there. Yeah, definitely. And um, I've noticed over the last couple of years, at least, um, the companies that I've worked for um, are only reducing um, training spend. Um, so the focus is more about learning outside of work, I think. Um, and then if you can find a candidate that's passionate, that's constantly learning things outside of work, and I think that's really correlated with the amount of 
free content that you can learn and also through others to really stay up to speed and get ahead of their curve. Um, those two things go really well together. And um, I think it, you know, in the economy right now, um, to get ahead, you would sort of look for those candidates who really know their stuff and who are eager to innovate. Um, and I think even more so for a candidate that's been at the same company for some time that if they sort of understand and know the latest sort of trends and the technology stack, um, it really puts them ahead. Often you can get complacent sometimes. You've been in the role for four years. Okay, this is quite relaxing. I'm just gonna sort of just do what I have to, which is unfortunate, I think. Um, the other component to sort of getting noticed is and it could be related to the CV as well towards the end um, is around projects that you've contributed to. Um, Maxime is um, the sort of creator of Apache Airflow, um, which is a open source repository for a data visualization tool that I'm a really big fan of. Um, his GitHub profile is really impressive. Um, you can sort of see the contributions at the bottom um, throughout 2020 and it's sort of a heat map of the number of different commits that he has made to a variety of different repositories. Um, he is a software engineer and he shares a lot of stuff publicly as well. Um, I think my profile and contributions might only have like one or two dots overall, um, nothing compared to him. Um, but if you're a data engineer, um, like a software developer, um, then I think how you uh, remain sort of skilled in particular areas is you do stuff outside of your work and it might be giving feedback or contributing in some way to your own development and GitHub is a fantastic way to showcase that. Um, you can also combine that with Kaggle. So Kaggle has a number of different open data sets. Um, so you can extract those. Uh, those data sets are typically geared towards sort of more favorable machine learning exercises where there's a proven outcome or a use case. And it's a good way to really sharpen your skills. And then you could commit that to your own repository and look at how you would view that activity, um, which can be really attractive to a recruiter or another company. I think this is the last slide that I had on this. And then we go into the more open discussion. I think we've been having a really good open discussion as well. Um, is there any feedback on brand at all and getting noticed? Um, Sean, we don't have any specific question at this point, but I think what um, would be maybe helpful um, to the community members would be if you want to um, expand on the GitHub and, and Kaggle a little bit more, because I think um, LinkedIn and resumes and CVs um, might be a little bit more straightforward how you can um, work around it. But for those type of um, public profile that you can build up, um, if you know where to start, um, how long it's going to get take you to get to the point, and should you just you know, if I am a data um, um, data science um, sort of a candidate, should I just go and open a GitHub account and just put everything that I've done on it straight away now, and or should I just maybe more go and um, start commenting on other people's work and where to start and how to kind of um, grow in this journey, if it makes sense? Yeah, definitely. Um, maybe Daniel, um, are you able to answer some of that? Uh, yeah, so I will give some of my own input on this one. Um, so I have interviewed other candidates as well. And so, um, and I've come across some candidates who has very impressive, you know, open source um, projects. And um, I can't speak for everyone. And um, my own expression is that I normally don't look at the commit logs um, because it's more like um, what you're capable of doing instead of like how you go all the journey from, uh, you know, like a bare, bare bone, you know, simplistic uh, walking skeleton type of project to the current like meaty implementation. But the fact that I can get the whole project out and look at how they solve, um, you know, a particular problem is really desirable. And that gives me the confidence that even without looking into their previous um, sort of like employment history, um, I have certain level of confidence that they can do stuff and they can do stuff in um, 
the way they show they're showing. Obviously, I would get them to sort of explain um, why they do things like this and that. But um, in the end of the day, at the end of the day, this will really give um, like a high level of confidence that they are capable of doing this, whether they have you know previous working commercial experience with that or not is another thing. But um, obviously, it's prefer pre preserve like preferable. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me, Maya. Okay, and but yeah, so it, it's a very good addition and. Um, especially for those who haven't got much um, commercial experience prior to this role, it will be a very good um, sort of knocker to, to, you know, start a conversation and say, you know, can I apply for this role and, and that type of thing. And same as Kaggle. So with Kaggle, it's very specific to data. And whether you're a data analyst or data engineer or data science, um, you can always use Kaggle as your resource and as a platform to showcase your ability. Um, so obviously data, you have how do you get the data and how you wrangle the data and how you sort of like, um, you know, put the data into the correct platform for your analytics purpose. So as long as you can prove um, through different Kaggle, um, you know, uh, projects that, okay, I'm, um, you know, capable of like getting data and I'm capable of, you know, uh, transforming data for analytics and I'm capable of doing the analytics itself and I'm capable of communicating the analytical result to, um, you know, um, to make the point. So storytelling, what we're calling. Um, and then um, it's very relevant to, um, you know, the role that they're applying for and it's a very helpful thing to do in general. That's a really good summary. Um, and I think looking at the commit logs, it can be quite daunting. You don't necessarily know what's going on. <laughs> um, but I think um, what I'll do is I'll, um, Hria, I'll share um, some tutorials um, that will help people get started in GitHub and Kaggle. Um, you know, create your first repository, do your first commit. Um, there's sort of GUI tools that make it really easy. Um, the, I think the preference might be via command line, but you can slowly improve your skill set in this. And it's sort of like using Trello for project management or JIRA. Um, these become a set of tools that you would use in your career to perform specific tasks. And it's sort of like an ease of life thing. Um, so if I look at GitHub, not only can you sort of showcase your work, um, look at um, how eager you are around learning outside of work, um, you can also drive efficiencies in how you categorize things. Um, and then if you have changed some code um, on like a text file, if you press save, you've lost all the work, you can at least retrieve a functional uh, version of the code that worked if you've made a mistake. Um, so being able to track that version control, especially amongst the team is really helpful if something does go wrong. Um, the other tip that I might just mention is um, the naming conventions that you might have around how you create repositories. Um, so in the case of Maxime, he is in the top left. Um, his sort of highest liked repository is more around knowledge sharing around curated data engineering tools and resources. Um, so the repository almost turns into like a list of useful artifacts. Um, and then the sort of bottom left, um, which is sort of a forked version, which has a low amount of likes or stars, um, is the superset business intelligence tool, um, which doesn't make any sense um, only until you look at the description. So I think it's important to add a description to the repository as well. That's great, Sean. I think if um, also, if we can have Javid um, on the um, sort of our QA as well as um, someone actually applied, um, you know, a lot of these sort of um, tips along the way, and actually secured a, a great job, not just a job. And um, I must say that we are very proud of you, Javid, and we never Thank doubted, you. you know, your um, capabilities and very impressive resume. But um, as a migrant myself, I know that it is very, um, a sense of, you know, a great achievement that you, you know, come to a new country and you actually prove yourself straight away, which is um, huge. And I, um, I congratulate you on that. 
but also if um, maybe we can have your thoughts on you know our session that um, which of these you know tips you think that um, it could have been helpful you know back then when you started your job hunting which one you actually applied and it did work for you and um, what um, sort of your having your thoughts on in terms of whether it's a resume or marketing or using um, tools and other platforms rather like GitHub and Kaggle and um, LinkedIn to actually market yourself to the recruiters. Um, thank you, uh, first of all, for the, you know, uh, art, art uh, community for giving me the opportunity of being in this e event. Uh, yeah, uh, regarding these tools, all of the, these tools that, uh, you know, um, mentioned here, were uh, quite useful and can uh, contribute to, um, you know, the uh, uh, contribute to the process of getting some applicant hired. For me, the process was, um, you know, the process started a little bit um, inefficient because I wasn't familiar with the whole environment, uh, whole the atmosphere of, uh, you know, job market in Australia. Um, Based on my beliefs and based of my previous experiences, I was stuck with, you know, very, very old um, work experiences. And of course, you know, uh, I love to, uh, you know, uh, keep my mem memories all together with me. But at some point, you have to get rid of them, update yourself and go, go with the flow so you can um, find new opportunities and, uh, you know, uh, sharpen your tools to cut through the, uh, you know, um, barriers of getting hired. Uh, and that, that cutting tool may be um, it is the um, cutting edge technologies that you have to learn, you have to know. Um, one of the tools that really helped me was uh, actually LinkedIn. Um, it was quite useful for me. I, I was just trying to, um, you know, uh, first of all, make connections, make make my personal brand. And second, of course, I was uh, I'm a person who loves to get busy all the time. So I was just, um, you know, doing yes, lots of activities on LinkedIn and it really paid off. Um, about the uh, GitHub and Kaggle, um, yes, I, I once, once I landed in uh, Australia, I started using those sites and they were uh, as uh, my friends uh, told uh, everyone, yeah, these tools are a, a proof for what you can do and, uh, you know, showcase what you know and show what your capabilities are. Uh, about the CV, uh, yes, I, I kept it short and keeping the resume short is crucial because um, when, I, when I changed my CV, when I revised my CV, I got a lot of good feedbacks after that. Um, and uh, wh when we go to the interview, I, I would like to share some other things, other stuff um, as well. Thanks, Javid. Um, that was very insightful, and especially around LinkedIn and resume, that which was yeah. our topic today, that um, I think I'm guilty of it, um, having a very long resume. And as you said, it's sometimes you want to showcase everything that you've done you know, in the past 15 years. And um, what I personally experienced is that um, I guess this is as a society, our sort of attention span getting shorter and shorter. So someone, um, I'm probably recruiters or hiring manager and Carl, I'm just gonna pick on you yeah. here because we've got you here, but it's like you want to actually get to the bottom of it maybe under a minute um, because maybe you know um, they, they got 50, 100 candidates that they just need to kind of quickly skim through and see is this, is this person going to go to my shortlist or not first and foremost? And if not, I don't have really time to kind of read 10 pages. And I, as I said, I've been guilty of it. And I had resumes that now I look back and it's like six, eight pages. And sometimes I get passionate and I had a lot to kind of talk about myself. But um, I think maybe one key point out of today's session is that try to, um, you know, have a very concise and brief um, resume that you are not missing out on, you know, marketing yourself and your skill, but it's just to the point. Yeah, and one more thing that I should add is that, um, as mentioned in this event, using uh, bullet points really helped me, and especially with, you know, ch t uh, changing the keywords to bold 
so the hiring manager or someone who's uh, just reading through your CV doesn't have to go through all the sentences, just the keyword. That was great, Javi. Thank you. Carl, did you want to add something? Yeah, no, just, just kind of on that, what you were saying, completely agree. I think that's why that front page we were talking about earlier is so important, having that kind of good summary, having, as you say, the, the kind of technical skill sets in bold, that they, the keywords that they're looking for. If, as a recruiter, I, yeah, as you say, I can sometimes have hundreds of applications and I don't have to go through them. Um, we want to get through them, as you say, in a minute or so. And if we see, yeah, in that front page, a lot of the keywords we're looking for, it will then kind of prompt us to to read further, read, read more. And um, yeah, that's why it's very, very important, as you say, to do that. Thanks, Gar. That's great. I think um, I just put it to our um, live audience, and if they anyone have any questions um, from anyone or all, um, feel free to post your questions, and I can read it. Or if you want to just unmute yourself, and you can ask your question. What I'll say as well while we're waiting, um, look, obviously, if anybody does ever need help with their CV. Um, I read quite a lot every day. So, um, yeah, happy to, to kind of, if you want to email me or pass them via the, the Roundtable app, um, I'm happy to read through it and give you a bit of feedback on that as well. That's great, Carl. Thank you. I'm sure that um, it adds a lot of value to a lot of people. And because, um, and again, while we are waiting for <clears throat> people to just put their questions, um, while you go and read your own resume, as much as you want to cut it down, sometimes um, whether it's that um, sort of maybe um, second guessing yourself that am I just cutting too too far down? Um, am I not presenting myself well? So it's really good to have that second opinion, and especially if it's from a recruiter, that's um, that's gold. Yeah, absolutely. More than happy to help with that if anyone needs it. That's amazing, and I think that's the value of um, this community to be able to empower each other and help each other to grow to our best um, version of ourselves, whatever it's our ambition and our goal. Um, we are here to help each other and um, kind of hold each other's hand um, because um, I guess this is the kind of uh, tagline that came from COVID, but we are really in this together. And um, I think uh, probably one of the positive things maybe out of COVID is that um, as a society, we realize that how fragile we are and how much we need each other's help. Okay, so, so while we're waiting, oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, Danielle, please. Oh, yeah, okay. While we're waiting for the questions, um, I also have um, a few words just to sort of like bring us back to um, today's topic, which is um, CV and marketing yourself. So we talked about, um, you know, CV and LinkedIn and GitHub and Kaggle, and we have so many like useful, um, you know, uh, like skills and uh, I mean, useful tricks to, to get your um, you know, bump up your, your, your visibility and get more connected. At the, at the end of the day, um, we can use all the tips and all the techniques to um, do things that is helpful to us. But let's remember that um, um, the goal is currently to, um, you know, market yourself and, you know, increase the, um, ch the chance of getting um, the job that you want to get. And so, some of the techniques may or may not be relevant. And if they're not relevant, be careful to use it or overuse it. Um, so for example, we talked about like having um, a unique form of um, you know, CV, that's really good. Um, but whether to use it or not, it really depends on the context and, and the role. And be careful not to use it for every single role that you're applying to. Um, otherwise, it may or may not work against you. And that's my addition to it. That was great. Thanks, Daniel. Sean, did you want to add um, anything more to it? Um, I think that's really good. Um, the, I guess the other aspect is increased diversity. Um, I am starting to see roles become more and more blended. Um, so if I was to hire a data engineer, that's really on trend at the moment. Um, there is massive growth in that job segment. Um, that role might start to blend into other areas as um, people develop their competency and skills and experience. Um, so who knows, you might see data scientist, engineer, I don't know, um, or the likely one might be um, data and analytics engineer um, partnering with a data scientist. Um, I think you can never predict the future, um, but if you 
um, are passionate about certain areas, then broaden your specializations. It's only going to help you. Thanks, Thanks John. John. Um, I think, oh, sorry, Daniel, you want to? No, I was just saying couldn't agree more. Um, I think um, just for the benefit of the community members, as Daniel um, pointed very well, just bring it um, into maybe bullet points covering everything that we discussed today and, and Javid's point. So um, just in summary, what we kind of discussed was um, having a um, resume that represent your um, soft skill and technical skill. Um, and as Daniel mentioned, um, also make sure that you are actually kind of proving your capability and your technical skill that you are, you can deliver um, the job that you are applying for. Um, also, Sean, I think you mentioned that in terms of LinkedIn and um, try to um, provide or, or, or sort of a, provide a platform or an opportunity for a recruiter to get to know you a little bit better through your um, LinkedIn profile. So um, whether it's going to be commenting on other people's articles and posts, or if you are passionate and um, you want to present your, your knowledge, um, feel free and um, have sort of a confidence to put yourself out and put a, um, an article or a post. Um, and I think Javid also mentioned that um, sort of um, boil down your resume to maybe two, three pages with highlighting your um, keywords that you, you, you know that it can represent you and market you well. Um, if there is anything else that you, you think that you can add to this sort of a summarized version of today's session, please um, feel free to unmute yourself. I'll just add one more thing, uh, which is um, like all these platforms, they're, they're, they're great to um, market yourself. Um, there are more, so, so don't be limited to um, these particular platforms because there are other things like Medium um, and also um, like Stack Overflow. So one is more technical, uh, like Medium is more kind of like, you know, communication side, like proving yourself that you can communicate a project and, and the result and, and tell the story um, in a meaningful way. Uh, whereas, you know, um, for Stack Overflow, it's more like, okay, you're very active in the tech, you know, uh, community and you um, are active in helping others, um, you know, answering questions or um, at least very active um, using that platform to get some questions answered. So there are more and more platforms coming out. And um, the point is that um, as long as it's helpful marketing yourself um, and let people know about certain aspects of yourself, um, you can just use it and, and um, but also be wise of using something uh, as long like just if you know that it's going to help then please use it if you're not sure um, yeah think twice. Um, thanks Daniel. Um, Javi just um, um, sent his apology he had to go to a meeting um, but Carl, Sean did you want to have um, sort of a last um, comment? Um, yeah, I think that everything that everyone's discussed today has is, is been really, really useful. I'd say one thing maybe worth keeping in mind when you are updating your profiles is make sure you're updating both of them, both your CV and your LinkedIn. Um, there is quite often we'll see a, a new CV come through and LinkedIn is a few years behind and, and then it starts to kind of pose a few questions. So just make sure that, yeah, you are updating both things at the same time. That's a good point. I've um, got nothing further to add, Haria. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. I um, appreciate your time, Daniel, and um, Carl making time today. Um, it was a great session, as um, I, if I can say, as always. Um, and I'm sure um, our community and we're going to um, enjoy uh, watching this session later. Um, we will post the recording of today's session later on this week. And feel free to continue the conversation, post your question. And um, Daniel, you've been amazing um, and, um, answering a lot of people's questions, uh, the same as Carl. And we also uh, have to mention Brandon's name as well and um, everyone kind of participating in the conversation, which has been great. Thank you so much and uh, have a great afternoon. Thank you, guys. Thank See you. Bye. Cheers, guys. See you. See you. Yeah. Bye.